Welcome back to this special episode of INC News World as we take a look back on the year 2022 and how God guided the Church of Christ in its entirety. We saw that despite what the world faced in this past year, the Church of Christ was triumphant in all its endeavors with the help of the Almighty God. But it wasn't just the church that God guided to victory. He helped individuals and their families, especially during their darkest moments. On this special episode, we meet five individuals, some who we featured in the past, for their testimonies of faith and how God extended His guidance to them. Let's go to the mountain states where we meet a woman who experienced the pain of loss this year. But despite this great trial, she was able to find comfort in God's warm embrace. I love you! Mama's boy, look at this mama's boy. Hi, handsome boy. Hi, handsome boy. Can I get a hug? Can I get a hug? I love you. Back in 2020, we featured here on INC News World a heartwarming story of a family reunited with one another after battling COVID-19. I just got off the phone with my wife because she can't be here with this whole lockdown. Augustine Feiger, affectionately known as John John, was ecstatic to see his son again after suffering a severe case of COVID, which nearly took his life. One of the hardest things I've ever had to do in my whole life. We never thought at, at any time that we would have to sacrifice giving up our son for two weeks. After COVID, a lot of things changed. We learned what to prioritize in life, not to sweat the small things, and we really put a lot of focus in our health, um, spending time together as a family, but most of all, putting God first in everything that we do. Little did Kim know that these happy and precious moments with her husband would suddenly come to an end this year. John John's passing came unexpectedly. A shock not only to me, but to everyone. On September 28, John John passed away due to a ruptured abdominal aortic aneurysm. He was survived by his wife Kim and his son Troy. A painful and heartbreaking loss for a young wife like Kim, especially considering their son's condition. My son Troy has been diagnosed with autism. Sometimes when I look at my son, I feel sorry for him. Because John John loved Troy with every fiber of his being. So knowing that he won't have that love growing up, will I be able to provide that kind of love to him? That's what I'm most worried about. But to find strength in the midst of sorrow, Kim looks towards her faith. Even though I'm going through this, it doesn't mean that God doesn't love me. It means that He wants me to realize to rely on Him. I really crave listening to the words of God during the worship service, during the Bible study. Only the words of God can heal a broken heart that's grieving. I will never forget that live streaming from Ka Eduardo. He said, you're given challenges. Binibigyan ka ng pagsubok, pero kahit binibigyan ka ng pagsubok, maging masaya ka pa rin. Ang, ang Panginoon dumaan na sa ganyan. Tinanggal na niya yung mga mahihirap na bagay para sa iyo. Despite the grief and the worries ahead, Kim looks back at the short amount of time she had left to spend with John John after he survived COVID. Even though he was taken unexpectedly, I never questioned it. Why? Because after COVID, we asked God if you extended his life, we would do everything we can to serve you. And he gave us that time. So I'm grateful for that time that God gave us. 
From her story, we could learn that no matter how short, life is a great miracle to be thankful for. And while this year has brought much sorrow, it's important to Kim to further reflect on what she's grateful for. I want to thank the friends and family who is supporting me through this time. Even brethren from all over the world. It gets sad sometimes, yes, it gets lonely sometimes, but the fact that I can call on to God and everything I ask for is being granted right away. I want to thank God for that. While the pain of loss is unavoidable, Kim seeks to honor the memory of her husband by courageously moving forward. I will do my best to uphold my duties in the church, that no matter what happens, I will always serve him with my family, with Troy. My husband finished his race strong. So my goal for myself to do things the right way so that me and Troy can meet him there again in the Holy City. It is no easy feat to leave family behind and move thousands of miles away in hopes of building a new life. However, when Anna, a woman from the Philippines, relocated to Northern Europe for work, she wouldn't anticipate just how great the blessings were in store despite having to leave her family behind. Let's take a look. From Borno, Czech Republic, I'm Sister Anna Dulin, reporting from Oslo, Norway. Reporting from Narvik, Norway, I'm Sister Anna Dulin for English and Christo News Network. Being a multimedia officer, this is a life-changing duty for me. We are consisted of 15 countries, so we are very diverse and uh, complex. It sounds very challenging, but uh, this is our strength, actually. Anna Doolin and her duty as a multimedia officer in the Church of Christ in the Ecclesiastical District of Northern Europe is what gives her daily inspiration, living in a country far away from her loved ones. And as an OFW, or Overseas Filipino Worker, there are struggles adjusting to living in a new country. It's super cold here, here especially during winter. It's one of the challenges that we are facing living in, in Denmark. Well, it's not easy to live far away from, from our family. We are miles, miles away. I, I miss them, or sometimes we feel homesickness. They, they call it homesickness. But despite feelings of sadness from missing her loved ones far away, she's able to carry on by diligently fulfilling her duty. One of her duties is being the multimedia director in their district, tasked with documenting the various events and activities of the church and managing other team members coming from different cultures and speaking different languages. Her duty has taken her many places, literally. I travel a lot of times. Um, I've been to um, Poland for uh, Unity Games. That's I've been to Norvik, Norway, two weeks ago. Two weeks ago to cover the uh, inaugural worship service. I was in uh, Prague, Czech Republic, and Olomouc to cover the inaugural worship service as well. Greenland to cover the inaugural <laughs> worship service. I was also in uh, Sweden for another inaugural worship service. We are countries apart. Traveling is uh, part of it, uh, in our, performing our duty. In, in Greenland, the, the weather is very unpredictable. Uh, there is a, a high chance na makansal yung mga flight. Yung snow is until our knee. We were so emotional because uh, all of us has our own challenges po. But we made it to that day. Someone always with her covering these events is her husband Arnold, and he also recollects the blessings that have come along with their duties, including in Greenland, where he was also able to perform as a head deacon. Nang mabalitaan po namin na inaprobahan na po na may tatag ang group worship service sa Greenland, ay nagagalak po ang aming mga puso dahil maidadagdag po ito sa mga teritoryo na rating ng, ng banal na iglesia. Mahalaga ito sa akin dahil nakabahagi kami 
sa ginawang pagtatatag ng group worship service sa dakong iyon kung saan hindi pa nararating ng iglesia. That was one of the uh, most memorable baptism I ever attended po. In performing this duty, she has played a vital role in documenting the growth of the Church of Christ in Northern Europe. Uh, the, the Church has reached 162 countries. I feel blessed that I have uh, witnessed uh, some of the inaugural worship service po. And that is the uh, fulfillment of God's promise to His nation. As much as it has been a blessing for them to witness such a historical event, it hasn't always been easy. For each coverage event, she leaves her job and makes sacrifices to prioritize producing quality news for every activity. Sometimes po I feel like giving up kasi napapagod din po ako minsan nakakasakit. Pinagpapanata ko na lang po sa Diyos na bigyan pa ako ng lakas. There were times na Umiyak po ako kasi nagkakasakit ako. So, nalulungkot ako dahil ayoko pong mapabayaan po yung tungkulin ko. Looking back at the year that passed, her heart overflows with abundant gratitude. Sa taong lilipas po, napakarami ko pong gustong ipagpasalamat sa Diyos dahil nakapananatili po kami na malakas at uh, ang buhay po namin sa kabila po ng mga nangyayari sa mundong ito, napakarami pong kaguluhan at mga sakit na lumalagana pero nananatili kaming malakas, masigla. Lagi po kami magpapasalamat sa Diyos kahit ano pa po ang mangyari po sa buhay namin. Dahil napakabuti niya po sa amin. Marami po siyang mga biyayang pinagkaloob sa amin. Kahit po hindi namin hinihiling ay patuloy niya, binubuhos niya po sa amin ang masaganang biyaya. Ano man po yung mangyari sa, sa mundong ito, ano man po yung kakaharapin namin sa panibagong taon, patuloy po kami sa, na maninindigan sa amin pong, sa amin pong tungkulin, sa amin pong pananampalataya. At lagi po kami mananalig sa Diyos at sa lahat ng Kanya pong magagawa. Coming up on INC News World. 16-year-old table tennis champion Aljay Villena from the Philippines reveals his true source of inspiration and success. In Southeast Africa, a man against all odds is able to bring his family to the true faith, reaping blessings along the way. Stay tuned to INC News World.